Hello Animals fans and welcome back to the Animals Reviews YouTube channel. We're back with more Podcast Watch. And we're back actually with Animorphology. Now you may think, you just covered that a couple of episodes ago. Well there's a reason. Because our new mission is to find people who like this book. 37 The Weakness. I've made it my goal to find an Animos fan who likes, like, actually genuinely likes this book, thinks it's a good book. And I think it was Mehdi, I think. Let me just, uh, I believe it was, was it Mehdi? Who said that Animorphology were actually very positive about this book. See if I can find it right here. Do, 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 do. It's not there. Where the bloody hell is it? Oh god, I'm going to have to... Nope, that's not it. What am I doing? Great start to the video, Adam. Well done. Alright, here we go. Lance Magma, so it wasn't Medibollocks, says Animorphology is the one to do if you're looking for a group that loved 37, so much that they did two episodes on it. Now, I'm probably not going to watch two episodes. I'm going to watch as far as it takes me to finish another one of these, the, the Fax Massive Drinkathon. So, and we're still having the new rule in place, but here are the rules. We're drinking in fingers, by the way. Modern political issues, two fingers, character traits, one finger, TV show criticism, four fingers, 90s reference, three fingers, movie talk, two fingers, off mention, one finger, something wrong, two fingers, naughty talk, two fingers, podcast name, one finger. And if there's a cinnamon bun mention, it activates the wild drink. And the new rule for this particular part of the series is anytime they say something positive about this book is two fingers, which is why I think I might not be here too long today. Because if they truly are positive about this book, then we'll be drinking a lot of two-finger forfeits. So, let's find out. We've seen Animorphology uh, quite recently. Really enjoyed it. If you like what you hear today, remember to go check out that link. Let's see what they say about book 37. Let's go. My name is Jenny. My name is Ted. My name is Gray. And, and this, this is Animorphology. Animorphology. Right, so already we've got a podcast name, which is One Finger. Drink. The invasion, the visitor, the encounter, the message, the predator, the capture, the stranger, the end, the secret, the so end, the forgotten, the reaction, the unescaped, what they apparently the talk about. The it says the escort come back? I don't remember that. The discovery, the proposal, the threat, the mutation, the violation, the separation, the deception, the mystery, sacrifice, the diversion, the escort come back. What the last one about? We'll find out. The weakness. Hi everyone. This episode is about Animorphs Book 37. At least, Grey thinks it's about Animorphs Book 37. You may think you've read 37, but chances are you haven't read the book we're talking about. If you want to read it before listening to the episode, head over to our website at animorphology.com. Okay, so we read book 37. Grey's making a lot of faces. The weakness. <laughs> yeah, Grey like... I'm now intrigued. What does that mean? Literally just finished it. I, yeah. We were all, we were all so Seconds weird. ago. So what Second. did you think of the weakness? I'm so confused. I'm what are you so confused, confused about, Grey? Well, but why does the cover text say the thing that isn't in the book that the thing and then... This has long been... What's the thing to say on the book? On the UK version it just says, I'm ready. SpongeBob. I'm ready. I'm ready. Really is the Spongebob book of the series, isn't it? In a question? <laughs> I was so... My whole... It was all about that! You know, you are you really didn't have a chance of predicting this I one. I did or... not! In the big scheme it was of very things, unfair. <laughs> but in the big scheme of things, you managed to be remarkably correct. So Actually, I yeah. Think you should, I think you should... Well, be... they didn't go to the Escort homeworld. Right, they didn't, but, but the Escort showed up! The Escort up. showed up! I am the queen of predictions. You are the queen yeah, of yeah, predictions. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, I'm already confused. Where did the is No, there was no... Uh, uh, they must be... Uh, they'll, they'll explain. The, the Lyra way, did not show up, but you know. No, but... The he fact was very Lyra... Were... Thematically, he was also very Lyra. So, it, like... What? Oh God, a you're lot so of... right! Good point! Grey. <gasps> you're so right. Queen of predictions, yes. I can't promise the predictions will continue to be this easy <laughs> going forward. Easy! But... Well, okay, you pick a new book where everything's gonna happen, and I'm sure it will. Yes, obviously. Yeah, we already know what happens in 
this one <laughs> yeah. escapes in 50 and Cryak dies in 53 and triple and then they wedding do in 54. The reset yeah. button and, oh yeah, yeah, the reset button. Reset so button. do they still get married after the reset button is pushed? Yes, because okay. it reset button. I think I'm missing pre. I think I'm missing context to this segment because they've obviously been making predictions and I haven't heard them so. And then it skips and then ahead, and there's the like oh, Harry Potter okay. epilogue. Exactly. Nice. The Harry Potter epilogue was universally acclaimed, and there are yes, no problems I love here. it very Tobias much. and Rachel. <laughs> Therefore, names you know, your child, <laughs> Elfangor, and Mister Three. Mister <laughs> Three. <laughs> he was the bravest man we've ever known. Uh, oh, they better not redeem Mister <laughs> Three. <laughs> well, it turns out he was in love with Mister One's host. <laughs> All right. We're, so we're already getting way off topic. Yeah, I, I'm lost, but that's because I haven't seen the episodes prior. It's not your fault. We have to Craig, topic. aside from the cover text not matching, what do you think of the book? I don't love it, but I liked parts of it very much. Okay. That's technically something positive, which is two fingers. Drink. Okay. And I cannot believe how many times we talked about the, like... Russian doll of morphing, <laughs> <laughs> and not, and neither of you let on that it happened. We got to that part, and I was like, "How did they do that?" <laughs> we are the most sneaky. You are so good at this. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> very sneaky. Very good at lying to my face. I'm a little concerned. It was very hard to discuss some of that stuff without referencing this book. Yes, I will admit. Crazy. Yeah. You guys are so good at this. I'm so excited to finally be able to talk about all this. I know it's going to be great. What did you think, Jenny? I like this one a lot. I liked it more. Oh, so we might we uh, we think we found finally found a person who likes this book, and it's Jenny from Anamorphology. Jenny, come on down. What is right? I'm interested to hear why, because let's face it, this book is trash. Maybe that's two fingers for something positive. Drink. than I did when I read it as a kid. I think mm. I appreciated some of the thematic stuff a little bit more. It felt much more robust than the last one, mm. which was just kind of a throwaway. And it was, I had kind of forgotten there were ones in the late 30s that I liked this much. I also like this one more than I was expecting to. I think that it doesn't... Shit. We, we, right. Was it Lance Mag... Ma Lance Magma, thank you so much for telling me about this. Thank you. I found people who like. I found people who like this one. Shocking, I know. That's crazy, and I imagine we're going to get into the reasons why. But that's another two fingers for positive. I'm not going to be here for very long. I might not even get to the reasons why, because I'll, I'll already be completely sloshed. Oh, excuse me. Not a bad drink, this. Right, I'm going to brace myself for two fingers while we carry on. It's a really good job of being Drink very everyone. silly and very... And, like, also having some of the good, meaty, serious stuff that I really like in the series. Yeah, and it's like the balance of the series strikes. Of the, like, weird, rule-breaky stuff that <laughs> Animorphs books do, I'm generally more in favor of the stuff in this book and, like, <laughs> in a way that, you know... Um, yeah. I'd be more excited about revisiting this well than, say, revisiting... Book 35, which is a similar yeah, premise in well, some 35, ways. Yeah, yeah. there was just um, no justification. Whereas this felt more like a follow-up to 34. 34? 4 to 34? How? I'm actually intrigued. Uh, so they didn't mean 32? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they do the weird yeah. whale And form. even in 36, you have, like, Cassie coaching and stuff. Wait, what are they referring to with this morph? The whole Russian doll morphing thing. Yeah, I am. I am. I. I don't know what's going on at the moment, so I'm just gonna. I'm gonna carry on playing it. I'm gonna stop pausing at my own confusion because let's just take it for a given that I'm confused. Okay, so let's carry on. Yeah, it felt like it sort of came out of actual morphing stuff yeah. that had been in the series, as opposed to Thirty Five, which was just I don't know. He does weird stuff. Yeah, but we'll, yeah, yeah. we can talk about it. I think, so, yeah, it's like, it's fun, hard sci-fi, and it's fun, soft, vulnerable feelings. Yes. And I liked that they finally crossed a line, which maybe they'd crossed before. We should talk about it. 
Yeah. So, Jenny, would you like to fill in our list? I would love to. So, right, come on, Jenny, give it to us. A lot happened in this book. This might be a 60 seconds that just feels a little longer than most 60 seconds. <laughs> Ooh, all right, strap it in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the book starts. All the Animorphs are hanging out in a gas station. They're going to do this mission to investigate this warehouse that the Yurks seem to have. They're planning to go in, and then two people show up looking like Marco and Rachel. They're like, that's super weird. Uh, but it turns out it's not people who look like Marco and Rachel. They're holograms, and they are escort visiting from the escort homeworld. They are escort tourists. Um, am I? Where am I? Where? What's going on, Lila? Yeah, my fo- my thoughts precisely. What? What is? Go- I, I, escort. Are we reading the wrong book? Led by Guide, who has now advanced in the um, Trader Guild, or whatever his guild is called, and now he is called Mogul. <laughs> and he has brought this group of uh, 56 other escort to Earth because the Animorphs' memories are a huge hit. And these are all the, like, fans of the Animorphs' memories. So... Uh, the Animorphs are like, this is not cool. You know everything about us, and you look like us. There are, like, multiple people who are identical in this gas station right now. Like, you need to not look like us, and you need to get out of here. <laughs> so they're leading... Uh, I I am genuinely baffled about what's going on right now. I'm out of there, but this warehouse that they're planning to investigate, they know it's a big deal because, like, Visitor 3 keeps showing up. Visitor 3 shows up in his limo. <laughs> and they're like, the Animorphs are like, okay, this is cool. We can just get the escort out of here. They have no reason to suspect this group of people walking down the street. But then one of the escort, who is a Rachel fangirl, or fan guy, unclear of the gender of the escort involved, hears that Visitor 3 is there and is like, oh, Visitor 3, I must attack him, runs into the street morphs, you can't see my air quotes, but they're there, like changes the hologram to be a bear and stands in the middle of the street, like waving <laughs> her paws at the at, at the visor. Jake sends the escort out of there with uh, Axe and Cassie and uh, he and Marco and Rachel morph and run out and try to uh, gr- try to grab this escort. But then the visor also morphs and, you know, the escort isn't cooperating. And uh, Rachel ends up getting stepped on, even though she's an elephant. And uh, Tobias has to carry her out of there. And she's real mad about it. And they end up rescuing the Rachel escort, but the, another is... I'm sorry, but I need I, I, two fingers just for the, the amount of confusion I'm experiencing. Th- this, is, this is a gag, surely. What, what's, what's going on here? Escort had run into the fight, and he gets captured by the Yerks. So the Animorphs, they're all back in Cassie's barn, and they're like, this is terrible. There is someone in Yerk captivity who isn't one of us, but knows everything about us has all of our memories and mogul the escort tour group leader is like no no no, this is fine his name is actor he's up this is like he's in the theatrical guild like he's a pro he's definitely not gonna give up anything about you guys and they're like well well, the yurks will just put a yurk in his head and then it'll all be over just for context this is now empty i've got one pint left I'll probably have to fill in with one of the wildcard beers if this carries on, because I've only been here 13 minutes. Muggle's like, no, you can't infest an escort. And the Animorphs realize, like, right, because what we learned on the escort homeworld is that the escort are in two parts. There's the isk, which is, like, the outer body, and the yurt, which is the, like, yurk-like slug that, like, goes into their heads. And you can't put another yurk in there. And if you take the yurt out somehow, like, there's not really any brain left in the isk. Like, there's just a brain stem. So you can't infest an escort. And the Animorphs are like, well, they're going to torture him. And Mogul's like, he would never crack under torture. Except maybe after midnight tonight when he starts to feel... I'm going to read the comments. What do the comments say? I'll still come back to listen to this episode when I feel down always chip. Love the reveal. Diet Jenny, I have to give your own reaction to this book. Didn't spill the secret in the first minute because I would not have been able to resist. I love this book so much. Between the heist format and the nesting doll thing, specific emotions bleeding from each animal. What? But why does the cover text... 
The Matryoshka morphing a secret for s I am. I am. I am actually genuinely just finished a read through of the real weakness. <laughs> because it's so much fun to imagine. So is this fanfic? Your special. Toast. And the plot is lit. Thank you for not only giving me an amazingly entertaining new podcast episode, but also basically a new animals book for the first time. Right, so hold on. The real weakness. No. Right, here we go. Let's let's go on a bit of a tangent here. Okay. So this is what they're talking about. The real weakness. Dragon Morph? The actual version of 37. No, really, the other one never existed. A million thanks to the... My name is Rachel. There are times you probably see me in those... How Prince J on Rachel doing your commands? We'll stare. The new guy stared back out of Marco's face. We all looked at Marco, then the other guy, then at Marco. Uh, Marco said, am I losing it? Or look at so they're talking about a fan fiction. That's what they... I've been drinking illicit fingers for the whole bloody thing. So when they're saying positive things about this book, they clearly hated it so much that they just non-canonized it and replaced it with a fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I love it. I'm going to carry on listening to this one and consider this an advertisement for this, okay? So this is no longer really about this trash here. This is the real weakness. And if you like what you hear about this, I'll leave a link to this in the description as well as for Animorphology. Animorphology, you're awesome. <laughs> this... It's taken me, what, um, eight minutes to figure it out? But for the last three minutes, I was just like, something is going on here. Bye, Lila. Bye, Kitty. Well, let's just see what they say now. Feel the effects of Candrona ray deprivation. So the animals are like, great, we're going to die, and all our families are going to die. So they decide they have to go in and get this guy out. But they don't know where he's being held. They're like, Probably the Yerkul, but wait, we just successfully invaded the don't, Yerkul. Oh, don't they might have him somewhere else. We could try, like, hope that he's in the Yerkul, but okay, if we're so wrong, bad. we don't have that much time. We can't afford to be wrong. We could, you know, die invading the Yerkul, and that would also be bad. So they ask around, they ask Eric, they ask, like, Mr. Tidwell and the Yerk Peace Movement, like, does anyone know where this guy's being held? No one knows. So they come. Actually, what I'm going to do, I've just realized that listening to this is going to provide spoilers. Without a. What is, I should. I should. Reading this now. <clears throat> Grey, Ted, and Jenny read what is definitely, without a doubt, Animals Book 37. At least as far as Grey knows it is. Right. Okay. I was going to listen to more of this, but then I, I've just realised if you haven't read the real 37 before, then you probably don't want it spoiled. Apparently they like it, they really like it, so go check that out. But I'm not going to let it be a spoiler anymore. And we're going to, because going back here. So apparently, so there's two episode 37s and this must be the real one. Okay. Was, La was Lance, um, Lance Magma, were you trolling me? Because if you were, well done. Well done. I like that. So what is the synopsis? What, what are the bullet points to this one? What head cannon, if any, can make this book better? The animals aren't themselves. All right, the cat is on the, uh, the softbox lighting. Lila, get down, you nuisance. 
You, ooh, and question mark, question mark, etc. Complex swimming about, about hubris, Oedipus, and Hamlet. Jenny thinks Tobias and Rachel need to break up. Ted teaches everyone how to do the Rachel. Things Jenny almost likes. Animal Fology's three word, three word mantra. Inspector, 90s moments. That's a 90s reference. Okay. The council votes on a change to the animal's canon. Okay, so it sounds like... Lance was trolling me somewhat in a, in a very clever way. It took me eight it took me eight minutes to figure it out. Okay, that's probably quite slow. But let's listen to the real thirty seven. Let's go. My name is Jenny. My name is Ted. My name is Gray. And, and this, this is Anamorphology. And we get another podcast name <laughs> for the second time. Drink. The invasion. The visitor. The encounter. The message. The capture, the stranger, the end, the secret. I've loved doing this so far. The reaction, the, the unknown. I, 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 I the love that. The sickle discovery. This put me in such a good mood. The conspiracy by the red separation, the deception, the suspicious resistance, and the extreme sacrifice of diversion at the beginning. Right, let's talk about the actual weakness. So, this week we read 37, which I'm putting in air quotes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can already tell that I was wrong. They don't actually like 37. They hated the real 37 so much that they replaced it with a fanfic and liked it. Bloody cat. That's how much they despised this book that they almost tricked me into thinking they liked it. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the council hasn't ruled yet on whether that is an Animorphs book. Yeah. Um, it's The Weakness. It is The Weakness. It's a Rachel book. Of the series. It's not good. <laughs> what do you think, Ray? <laughs> oh, I love this. No, it's not good. I hated it so much. Yeah, that's the real reaction. That's what I was so shocked Aww. about a quarter of an hour ago when they were saying, yeah, I really like this book. It's like, what? I'm desperate to hear why. Turns out that was bollocks and you were, you were trolling everyone. And also, I'm a little bit worried that 37, no air quotes, that we read last week may have ruined me for all other Animorphs books because it was very good. And then I had to read this absolute garbage. <laughs> I'm uh, worried. I will say thank you. That was a very nice thing to say. But also, it's kind of funny, like I didn't read the like Canon 37 before writing the one that we sent to you. And now, after reading Canon 37, I'm like, wow, I wrote like a really direct rebuttal to this book without realizing that that's yeah. what I was writing. Good point. Yeah, but I think you knew, and sorry, Greg, I think you knew that the best of the Rachel books were behind us. Oh, I so did know. Were, I did know. You were correcting for that. Yes. I, I will say book 48 is probably her best. Just saying. I remembered not liking Real 37. I remembered it being a low point. Yeah. I expected it to be a little worse than 36. It was like a whole different realm of worse. Like it was down several levels yeah. of hell. Yeah. Yes. Several <laughs> levels of hell. <laughs> it was very deep. Right, book. I, 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 you are charming in how actual shit you are. That You've got a char... Right, you've got, there's a scale. It's like the Uncanny Valley, and I've talked about this before, where uh, the worse something gets, the worse people's impressions are of it. And then you've got the dip, where it's so bad that it's good. Okay? Think movies like The Room are in that dip. And then it goes back up again, shoots right up to the top. I think there's a, sec there's a secret second dip, where it's even worse than... 100% bad, where it actually develops a bit of charm. So bad that it's even worse than a, something that's so bad that it's good. That, you know what I'm talking about. There's a big dip, so bad it's good, rises again, and then there's a little dip over here as well. Where there's just a little bit of charm where it's, it's just completely atrocious. Deeply bad. I, yeah, I don't think either of the two remaining racial books are this bad, but... I hope I not. Know. I don't remember them at all, yeah. but... Like, this book is so... 
I don't actually hope this because I hope they have a healthy sense of perspective and are not, you know, regretting things they did 20 years ago. But if Catherine Applegate and Michael Grant were to wake up in the middle of the night sometimes and uh, feel a deep sense of shame for letting this book enter the Animorphs canon, I don't think it would be an overreaction. <laughs> really harsh words now. Right, so Lance, Lance Magma for lying to me. For being a, a, a traitorous little wretch. And you, my friend, are drinking five fingers. Me, for falling for it, I'm drinking a finger. Ah, right, carry on. <laughs> that's, well, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, this ghostwriter also wrote book 30. And another book and later another on. another book. Right, like, so like... It's probably not all the Ghostwriter's fault. Probably not. I mean, I had a lot of problems with 30. Like, there were things that I liked, but there were also things where I was like... Right. The, what I think happened, and I said this in my reviews, in this book and book 46, which was the next one that she wrote, she's down as Elise Smith. For book 30, she was Elise Donna, which tells me that Elise got married shortly after book 30 and obviously had a name change and she went on a honeymoon life took a different turn and things things changed in her life which meant that she couldn't quite focus as much on writing because this book was awful and as much as 46 started all right by the end of book 46 it read very much like this one so i think it is down to elise not that I'm saying that Elise is a bad writer. I just think that she was obviously experienced a big change in her life at the time. So much so that she changed her name. And I think that may have well been why her writing at, after that point was bad. Because 30 was all right. It was a relatively good book. So she's clearly got the writing skills. This is this feels weird. This doesn't feel quite like a normal Animorphs book, and also the beginning I thought was really bad. So I don't know. I I think maybe the Ghostwriter shares some blame, but we should we should uh, find out what happened in the book. Ted, you have the delightful task of summarizing. This yeah, book. okay. I didn't prepare for this at all. I hope it'll be less than sixty seconds because I don't <laughs> want to spend any more than that thinking about what happened in the book. I guess I'll try not to editorialize so that we can come back around to it. Good but luck. Good luck. Basically. This is the book where uh, Jake is out of town, so there, there's no Jake until the very end. And the Animorphs have discovered where Mr. Three's new grazing ground is. And so, of course, they decide to morph cheetahs and assassinate him. They're a little worried that Jake isn't around for this important mission. But, you know, the intel is very fresh and it's going to go bad. And Mr. Three is always rotating where he's feeding. So they morph cheetahs and try and kill him. It goes about as poorly as you would expect that plan to go. And even worse, when a new type of controller shows up, a Garatron, who is a prospective member of the Council of Thirteen, he's like a weird Andalite who's really fast, and he talks really fast. And he beats up all the Animorphs and then lets them live as kind of like a, I'm going to prove to Visser Three how much, how awesome I am and how much he sucks for not taking out the Andalite bandits. So they're like, wow, that went really bad, but... This guy, potential Council of Thirteen member, is here, and Rachel comes up with a plan that's like, hey, why don't we go on like a shock and awe terrorism campaign, hit all of the known controller-operated businesses, beat up and threaten a bunch of people, do a lot of damage, um, make Visser 3 look really, really bad, and maybe he will no longer be in charge or he'll be punished in some way, because this like Garatron guy is around to observe. See, with that summary, that you've just given there there is potential for a good story there just take everything you've just summarized there and there are the ingredients for something worthwhile because you could then connect it back to other council 13 stuff like we saw in visa which we did just re which was just recent bring garoff into it fucking awesome character from visa we never saw again you know make use of the council 13 somehow Get, make the animals come up with a better plan. Instead, what happens? Shit. <laughs> and 
the other end morphs are like, this isn't a great idea, but Jake isn't around, and we have no other way of making decisions, so let's mm -hmm. elect a leader. And Marco says, Act should be the leader. And Rachel says, no, I should be the leader. And then instead of having a vote, Marco says, well, I know Cassie and Tobias are going <laughs> to vote for Rachel, so it doesn't matter. So Rachel becomes the leader, which means all the Animorphs listen to her way more than they ever listen to Jake. And mm -hmm. they go on this terrorism campaign. They cause an old man to have a heart attack. I don't know. They do a lot of damage. They beat people up. Rachel sexually harasses an intern. Um, <laughs> they, they eventually hit the community center which they felt was a little bit risky, and it turns out it was risky because they get caught, and they, they all morph Polar Bear to go in and do a lot of damage, but Visser 3 morphs a gross blob that's really hot, and the Polar Bears... <laughs> 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 and the Polar Bears don't do well, and so they all have to run away, but Cassie gets captured, and so then Rachel's really mad, and she's like, she cries a lot, and she's like, woe is me. She's had this whole, like, running monologue about how she's learned about hubris in school, um, but uh, she will, of course, not be affected by this. Um, See, this plays into an Annie theory that I've got coming up, courtesy of Medi Bollocks, who keeps bugging me about it. Medi. But I'm going to talk about, in 32, were Mean and Nice Rachel really recombined? Or is there a, a fuck-up in it? Was Eric playing silly buggers again? Because throughout this book, Rachel is... Con it, she's very... Um, she's very... Obviously not referring medic... I'm not being a doctor here, but it's almost schizophrenic how she's going from Mean Rachel to Nice Rachel, just swapping in between. Which is something we hadn't seen from her before. And, of course, this is her the latest book from her since 32, when she was supposed to be supposedly recombined. So there's a theory that she wasn't properly recombined, and, yeah, things from that... So that's going to be now in any theory coming up soon. I'm starting to plan that, Medi. So it is coming, OK? Now, if you cry any more tears, you're going to drink a finger for every tear, OK? Keep that in mind. And she keeps calling herself... <clears throat> A hero, a warrior, and a king, which I can't even <laughs> say with a straight face. And, yeah, but then, then she, like, cries a lot, and they're like, how are we going to get Cassie back? And Rachel's like, I don't know, I quit. I'm obviously a terrible leader. And instead of saying, yeah, that's right, the other Animorphs are like, no, in this situation, we need a <laughs> Rachel plan. A plan that's so crazy, it just might work. So... They steal a private jet and crash it into a skyscraper in order to break into the Yerg pool. They do that. It wor That plan works fine somehow. Um, and in the Yerg pool, they're all about to get captured. And Visser 3 double dares the Garatron to beat the Andalite bandits on his own. And the Garatron is super fast. So he's. it's like really easy for him to beat up all the Animorphs who are there rescuing Cassie. But instead of just like killing the Andalite Bandit super fast. He's, like, showing off. And it turns out he doesn't know about snakes. So uh, Marco morphs a snake and poisons him, and he dies. And then Mr. Three is like, lol, I win. Because, do I pull you up on a technicality? There's something wrong, Forfeit. Snakes don't poison you. They, uh, they envenomate you. I mean, it's technically wrong, but it's not Animorphs wrong, so I'm only going to make it one finger. But that's only because I want, I'm want i thirsty and I want another finger, so I'm making any excuse. Carry on. And Drink. the Animorphs fly away to fight another day. <laughs> Jake shows up, and instead of... it's Instead of having a normal reaction, he says, Rachel, you did a good job. Being a leader is hard. And that's the end of the book. It, yeah. The laughing in the background is exactly how I feel. You, you've everything about what you've said so far in these seven minutes has just reflected exactly what I feel. What the fuck is this? Get it off my shelf. And if it is to remain on the shelf, make sure it's it's got sellotape over it because I wrecked it. <laughs> That's what I thought of that last bit of the book. <laughs> Oh man, great. I'm so 
so sorry that we can't tell you at the end of this episode that we made this book up. <laughs> I don't want us to have made this book up because I don't want this to have come from any of our imaginations. But also, it's just so bad. I wish we could tell you that, that it is not part of the original series. It's so bad. I don't. I don't understand my, how it is. So Jenny and I... Is, they, they're like me. They think it's so bad that there's no feasible reason for why it's this bad. You just can't fathom it. And so my search continues. So somebody who actually likes this book, I, I, I thought I'd found them. I thought I'd found them. But the search continues. Medi bollocks. Several iterations on like a headcanon from yeah, what this book yeah. is like. Mighty Rachel somehow escaped, locked <laughs> nice Rachel in her closet, <laughs> and all the other animorphs know. I thought they'd that's, be like, That's the theory. That's the theory. Visser 3 hashed out this whole plan with Marco in order to embarrass the Garatron. <laughs> like, oh, is we, this fan fiction yeah. that David wrote? <laughs> is this fan fiction that the Drode wrote? Did yeah. the Elemist have to insert it into canon in order to, like, preserve the timeline? Because, <laughs> like, we were like, oh, oh yeah, this is, this is, like, fan fiction that Marco would write. And we're like, no, it's too too much of, like, Rachel character assassination for Marco to write it. Like, he's, he's better than that. And we're like, David. And then we're like, no. David would have had it end much worse, and there would have been a self-insert character mm -hmm. that Rachel would have been in love with, and he would have spurned her and gone off to his glorious destiny. So it's not David. But it could be the drogue. We think the drogue might have okay. been. I like how the first item of discussion is, in what feasible scenario could this book actually canonically take place? That's the right th way to start a conversation about this book. I'm totally on board with that. My theory was that they actually didn't put me and Rachel right? and I straight yeah. back together. And then this is just me. So this is one of the main... That, that is the theory. And that is something that we're going to cover. Now, spoiler alert, when it comes to Zanny Theory, it's pr it made pretty damn clear in book 32 that there were two and they were combined. So I don't think there's still two separate... There are no two separate Rachels still. That's pretty clear. So I don't think there needs to be an Annie Theory regarding that. But it's whether Rachel's brain has just been melted in some way. That's what the theory is going to be all about. Many things that's totally bizarre about the characterization. Like, it, like you said, Jenny, it's complete Rachel character assassination from start yep. to finish. Yep. But none of the other Animorphs are acting like themselves no. either. And so, like, uh. I get this weird vibe reading it where, like, it's almost like all the other Animorphs know that something's wrong with yes. Rachel and they don't want to tell her. <laughs> right? And, like, well. you could read that as, like, oh, people are scared of Rachel. But it's normally, it's like those things where, like, the Animorphs are all conspiring behind yeah. her back. But we never got that reveal where it's, like, Tobias and Ax and Marco have been thought speaking this whole time about what to do about, about Rachel. About how it turns out Rachel's reintegration didn't work and she's relapsing and now there are two personalities like split but in her like the same head. You 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 are walking the same line I am. God, I love this group. Animorphology is awesome. Thank you for suggesting it. To me? Was it to me? Either way. Yeah. Brilliant. I like it. I still don't like how you d you didn't like the familiar. I'll never forgive you for that. But still, on this one, you are spot on. Absolutely spot on. And they're like trying to just not let her find out because it might freak her out. Because they're going to fix it in a few days or something. But no, that's not the case. No. My actual legit theory for this is that the ghostwriter read 32 and based her Rachel characterization on that. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. But, in a way, I don't think so, because they wrote book 30, which means they would have written, read books before that, because book 30, the characters are all in line. So it, it's weird like that. What happened with this book? There needs to be some form of explanation from somebody. What happened here? Weird. I think that that's actually what happened. It's so oh, many because, passages in here. Right, because both halves of Rachel and 32 are like caricatures. Of yeah, they don't feel like a real person. Right. I mean, that doesn't explain the other characters. And, you know, in 30, we didn't see a lot of the other characters. They did feel yeah, a lot it was, realer it than was this very book, but Marco. it was very much Marco, Marco's internal 
life. And I, I feel like I kind of want to go back and read that and see if there's stuff where they feel as horribly off as they do in this. Because this is just really bad. This was very pod people. Yeah. Every single character was making weird decisions and saying things that didn't make sense. And yeah. it all did not, it didn't hang together well. I, everything was awful. There also were several major editing. Bearing in mind, I'm still on the two fingers for anything positive said for it. And not once in this 10 minutes so far has anything positive be, been said. Errors that make me think that, like, they just wrote this in, like, two days. And in fact, I actually... I'm owed drinks. Because how many positive fingers did I drink from the real weakness episode? Probably about 10. 8 or 10. So I'm actually... I can actually skip fingers. Yeah. They wrote it in two days and are like, oh, we have to get it out. Right. To be fair to the ghostwriter, Apple Grant has always said that they were mm -hmm. terrible, terrible editors. And mm -hmm. they, they take full responsibility for the installments like this one. So I, I do suspect it was probably something like that. Yeah. There's so <laughs> the two longest sections of my notes are entitled you and string of question marks. <laughs> and That's about right. Several things in the string of question marks section are lines where the same character has two lines in a row. Yeah. yeah I or that. where yeah, there are these two paragraphs. I'm like, are these are these both Marco? Where it's like, look, I can't lead. Not right now. This isn't my mission. New paragraph. Look, maybe someday I'll be in charge. If I am, I'll probably screw up. I was like Where's that? I I wanna check that. I don't know why, but so that's the vis of it. I want to see him snap on hair on Bobby Baranski. Who the hell's Bobby Baranski? Sounds like an analysis for very soon. Let's see what's not going to happen. So where is... <laughs> I can't find the bit. But never mind. That's going to take too much time. Let's just carry on. They were choosing between those paragraphs and, and they I left forgot. them both in. Yeah. 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 I noticed that. It was super confusing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was like, because also there weren't a lot of dialogue tags in that string. So I was like, who is saying what? Oh, multiple of these are Marco in a row. Okay. Yeah. There was a thing where Cassie has a surprise niece. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, no, no, no. That that was a thing. I somehow I somehow breezed by that the first time through, and then the second time through, like flipping through my notes, I was like, wait a second, Cassie does not have any niece. Cassie That's doesn't have any siblings. Do they know what a niece is? Do they think it's like a cousin's child? Because that's not what a niece is. That whole section confused the absolute living daylights out of me. And I don't, I didn't understand what was happening. And I think the reason that I got so confused is that there's no break in the paragraphs, but there is a time jump. Mm. Just like sloppy montaging. Yeah. And it was very confusing so the niece thing didn't bother me as much as everything else that was happening on that page. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Though, right from the opening, I was like, this isn't how the books usually open. Like, they're opening in the middle of this, like, debate that they don't really go into much, and then they go off to do this action thing. I'm like, this just feels weird. Like, the narration is weird. Yeah, and it's, it's like, so you have a chapter of, like, let's hit hard and fast, and then you have a chapter of, like, cheetah morphing, but again, like... There is you... an entire chapter where they morph a cheetah. Right, right, but you, you skip, like, <laughs> what the, is that? acquiring the animal. Yeah. You skip all, of, like, the logistics of it. It's, like, it's weird. It sort of fits the, like, oh, the, you know, the animorphs have, like, an opening caper, and then they move on to the action. But It wasn't an opening not, caper. It's not that at all. Yeah. yeah. And it's, like, yeah, acquiring an animal... I mean, I did skip them acquiring the cheetah in 37, but it was, like, near the end where the action was ramping up. This is, like, the beginning. They did have an entire chapter on morphing the but cheetah. The thing is, nothing <laughs> about this Looks plan like... makes sense. I mean, we no. will return to this over and over, <laughs> over again, but we just had Visser where, like, they decide we'd rather have yeah. Visser free in charge. So even if Jake were around... They would not just randomly assassinate Visser 3. Yeah. They wouldn't try and get him demoted, right? The worst possible outcome would be Garatron guy runs the invasion of Earth. Yes. Because right? yes. he could have, if not for his <laughs> stupid, hubristic restraint, <laughs> the Animorphs would have all died immediately. I've never, I haven't seen it from that angle. So it's always nice to hear, especially, I, it sounds horrible to say, but I like 
hearing about faults that I didn't think of myself from other people, especially when it comes to this book. There's an endless well of problems with this book. I haven't covered every fault, but it's, it's the deeper you dig, the more problems you find. And in a way, that's intriguing. I, I like that. Yeah, so maybe he would have been okay because he also has hubris and it would have been, yeah. you know, he would have been a Visser 3-esque leader. I don't know. Um, but they never all morph the same thing in a battle situation. And they, they do, do it do twice. Twice, twice. 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 It goes very badly the first time and then they do it again. And it goes even worse. And like Cassie suggests it the second time or something. Or maybe she suggests it the first time. I don't know. I'm like, Cassie, you're better than this. Like, you know not to all be the same thing with the same weakness. Title of the book. Uh, I actually, that's not actually how the book starts. The book starts with an extended, oh. very confusing discussion <laughs> of the name Rachel. So my recent experience with this first page, when Ted was doctoring the Kindle file to put, you know, mm -hmm. my story in it. And so I was reading the page, I was like, did he change more of this? No, this doesn't sound like something Ted would write, but... It also doesn't sound like an actual Animorphs book. Where did this come? What is this? And I had to pull my hard copy off the shelf and be like, oh no, that's the that's the real first page. It's so bad. It's vaguely misogynistic. It is. Yeah. There are several misogynistic things in this book. Yes, there are. Yes. And I know that this is doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but the second paragraph... <laughs> So Please read we it. should have Jeremy come back to <laughs> do his extended rant about this. But no, no, no. His rants are never ranty enough. We need to rant for okay, him. I'm here for you because <laughs> here is what she says. My name is Rachel. There's a person in the Bible named Rachel. I don't know if my being called Rachel has anything to do with her. I doubt it. I've never seen my parents reading the Bible. Okay. <laughs> As we have established not long ago... Your parents are Jewish, and yeah. the thing about that is it means they wouldn't be reading the Bible. <laughs> That's a fair point. I never thought of that. <laughs> Seriously, right? Right. I just cannot express to you enough how lazy that yep. is. It wow. That's, these guys dig deep. Uh, I like that. So, when do, when did we learn that Rachel's family were Ju was was Jewish? Then again, Rachel's how does Rachel says she's never seen her parents reading the Bible, which I suppose makes sense. Okay, I don't even I don't know if I even want to give it the credit of digging into how race is tokenistic in this series because this book is just so bad. I feel like that's. It's you know. the least of its problems, and yet <laughs> that is a thing that should be one of its yeah. biggest problems. But then a couple paragraphs later, she's like, you know, there are at least five Rachels in my class at school, two of which are failing gym. I'm like, what is that? What is that? I know. Is that just they girls out, fail gym? No, like, did they cut out a whole, like, thing where Rachel is mad because she's failing gym? <laughs> like, was there, like, because this is, there are only 22 no, chapters it felt in this like book. It was just it's, a, like, like, it's, like, a, super short, yeah, right? So, like, yeah. was there even more bad stuff that got cut out? I have and, to like, assume. Everything about it, like, this just feels like filler. Like, let's just riff on the name Rachel for a while. <laughs> then there are, like, four chapters of them just like beating up controllers it's like yeah. super repetitive and samey like none of it, it it's not interesting at all no it doesn't two, really have a plot this book no. doesn't really have a plot two of them are failing phys ed and then she says it's a popular name lots of girls have it even girls who can manage to throw a basketball through a hoop from the foul line a what <laughs> it's not, first of all it's not called the foul line <laughs> i don't know basketball enough i'm just gonna assume they're telling the truth <laughs> <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Like, I don't... It, also, it, it Rachel would be really good at basketball. She she's so tall. tall. She's also, like, a super talented. She's, like, the highest achieving yes. animal. She's tall and she's athletic. Good, yes, she's good at gymnastics. I'm sure I, she can handle coordination. And yeah. then a paragraph... I'm just going to continue to yell about this yes, first please page. Do. And then the next one is, I'm different from every other Rachel you've met, and it's not just because the dorkier kids at school think I have a seriously bad attitude, which I do, so what? Okay, canonically, you are the best student. Yeah. Who, what are you talking about? <laughs> At it's all. The thing, it's the thing. You're the dating th one of the dorkiest <laughs> kids in your school. Oh, no. It's yeah. so true. Why are you, why? But it's the thing from 
32 where people pick up on her, like, vibes, as her mom would say, which I really liked, this idea that, like, oh, she now carries this intensity with her and people kind of read it and are a little uneasy about her. That's not what this is. This is just, like, an exaggerated caricature of, like, I don't know, kids think I have a bad attitude and I do. I hated it so, so <laughs> much. I can't even express. It's just, it's not, it's not the Rachel we have seen in other books. It's no, not no, the right. any of the characters we've seen, no, except no. maybe Jake. But, like... I don't know. There's a little bit of Rachel in that. It is exaggerated. It's definitely exaggerated. Even Jake. I mean, it was just, it's so bad. And the, the fact that Rachel has been, again, canonically, like, the best student, right? She mm -hmm. wins awards for how smart she is, made so many of the things happening in her brain completely completely inexplicable, not least the hubris thing, which yeah. at some point I would very much like to talk about. Can we just, <laughs> Should we want to go into it now? Okay. 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 Uh, just to say, being being smart is not mutually exclusive to having a lot, big, a lot of hubris. I need to put my coffee cup down in order to have this discussion. <laughs> so you don't end up throwing it? I, okay. The way that the hubris thing comes up for the first time is they have just read Oedipus Rex mm -hmm. in high mm -hmm. school. I don't remember reading that in high school, but fine, whatever. Middle school. Oh my god, are they in middle school? <laughs> I think they still are. They were in 30. Who even knows? We think that this is a middle school that goes through ninth grade. Yeah, because right. they must That's... be like 14 by now. Oh my god. Okay, fine. So in English class, they studied Greek tragedies, including Oedipus Rex, written by a guy with an equally unpronounceable name. Okay. That's where I first heard the word Hubris. Hubris is like a disease. It means excessive pride, over-the-top self-confidence, the belief that you can do anything you want better than anyone else because you know best, because you're special. I'm sorry, hubris is like a disease? Uh-huh. I didn't pick up on that. That's, yep. wow. Okay. That's how she describes it. And then the problem is, hubris usually results in some extremely nasty payback, like being so horrified when you learn that something you did was really, really wrong that you pluck out your own eyes. So, one, way to elide all of Oedipus Rex. <laughs> what you did was really, really wrong. Fine. Well, just, just, we're going to skate right past that. Because, again, least of the problems with this. From that description, she understands, at least in the vaguest and simplest of terms, what hubris means. Uh -huh, she has uh -huh. given us a definition and described what it is and what the effects are. Excessive pride, bad <laughs> that is what happens with hubris. Okay, fine. And she says, it kind of scared me reading about these heroes and warriors and kings. Oh, first time that comes up. The first up. iteration of like eight. Have I missed an impulsiveness character trait for Rachel? I don't think I have. All this time talking about Rachel, I don't think we've actually covered her impulsiveness. So, sort of have. I reckon somewhere there is. So I'm going to drink one thing if that. Drink, everyone. It also kind of reassured me, made me feel like I was part of a special club, uh. one that's been around for a long time, an exclusive club, a club for people like me who know they can do great things and do them and then get punished for doing them. I, I, and this comes up again and again, and my note there was just, come on, you just define this and I know you are smart, give me a goddamn break. You are about, and I, because I knew, I knew it was coming, and it did. That she's about to say, I am special and great, and I have all this excessive self-confidence and excessive pride and over-the-top self-confidence, believing that I can do whatever I want better than anyone else. And then I'm just going to ignore the fact that that is <laughs> bad. It's not, it's not good to be part of this special club. This special club gets you cursed by the gods. Why would yeah, you? Yeah. And then continue the theme of, look at me, I'm a hero, a warrior, a king, for the rest of the book. She calls herself a god in the next paragraph. <laughs> oh, no. People, like, people want their leaders to be larger than life, not subject to human frailty and weaknesses. Gods. So she is planning to be godlike for the rest of... Did she not... I don't understand how she can define hubris and then ignore it. Well, she sort of has this thing <sighs> where it's like, character is death. To be fair, that would be an example of hubris. <laughs> Destiny, which is funny because none of the characters feel like themselves in this book. But I think it's supposed to be some kind of like... Yeah, hubris is dangerous. It gets people in trouble. But 
I guess I can't avoid it because I'm just that, like, hero heroic warrior-like and kingly. Is it that? Uh, I need the lab. Be right back. <laughs> I don't know. Is it, like, the thing is, it doesn't make any sense because what this is from, like, writing this story is like, okay, well, the theme of this book is supposed to be hubris. So the way I will do that is have Rachel <laughs> do some exposition about what hubris is and then ignore it ironically, foolishly. Like, I don't... What's up? There's breadsticks. They're actually quite nice. Breadsticks? There's Greek breadsticks I bought the other day. Where? You all right? No, I was yawning. Oh. I'm not crying, I'm yawning. I don't, I, I also don't understand it's it. It's such because, a grandiose delusion. Yeah. And it keeps coming back. We're Sorry? I'm recording, my dear. What's up? This is really funny. Just take, take a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm worried they come on. <laughs> Sorry about that cat antics. She's like, I was running into this battle, you know, like a hero, a warrior, a king, you know, like... Wink, you know, like, remember that thing I said about hubris? Like, it's almost like she's, like, ruefully recounting it afterwards. Oh, something. I don't know. It feels very earnest every time she says that. I, like, yeah, it just, it's totally bizarre. It's it doesn't, completely bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. And, like, a good example of a narcissistic, hubristic protagonist is Edris, who we saw in Visser, mm -hmm. right? Someone who thinks the world of themselves and doesn't understand the consequences of their actions. They do not have the capacity to self-reflect and be like, oh, hubris is bad, and I sure have a come up that's coming, and that, boy, that's great. Right? It doesn't make <laughs> any sense. That's a good summary, yeah. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. No, nope. <laughs> no, nope. no, it's real bad. <laughs> and every, it kept coming up, and every time it came up, I got more and more angry about it. And there's nothing, it's it's like importing this theme from Oedipus Rex, and it has nothing <laughs> to do with, like, the history of the Animorphs. Because, like, if Jake and Rachel had ever had one conversation about leadership, they would have gotten past this idea, right? <laughs> Rachel's like... Oh, we need, we need, I need to be like a god to the other Animorphs. She doesn't think that about Jake, right? Like, Jake doesn't do that. None of the, no, none of the ways that the other. Uh, again, another fair point. The Animorphology Bunch are uh, nailing this. Absolutely nailing it at every turn. Love it. Animorphs think about what. So I, I'm finding it so hard to find anything to drink to. Not that I drink to things because they're wrong. That is one of the forfeits, but. They're just right. There's no night. They don't need '90s references, TV show criticism, or any of that stuff. So Rachel as leader means have anything to do mm -hmm. with what their experience has been, right? Like yeah, they've had Jake out of commission multiple times, and yeah. it's worked really well. Like they figured out how to get through it. They've mm -hmm. done a really great job. Being Where a, was that? Jake is a good leader because he is someone they trust to make game time decisions. And he's someone that they will obey mm -hmm. in the heat of the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Jake has always listened to Marco and Cassie and Rachel and Axe and Tobias when planning a mission. Yeah, so there are yeah. multiple times when they have this whole conversation and they're like, well, I guess we don't have to plan that much because Rachel's the leader and she doesn't want yeah. to. And it's she's ridiculous. like, they were arguing. Again, Ted. Nail on the head. That's... That's exactly it. Nice one. With me again. And then she's like, did you did you decide I'm the leader or did you not? Like, how dare you, like, gainsay me? I don't think she uses that word, but she might as well. Like, And they're like, oh, sorry, Rachel. You're right. We decided you're the leader. I'm like, that's not how leadership of the animals right, works. Right. And it's like, Cassie's like, oh, yeah, I guess we did make Rachel the leader. Oops. Like, there are nothing a couple, we can yeah, do Yeah, exactly. It. There are a couple times they're like, well, we already made this decision, so we're stuck with it. I'm like, what? Are... This only makes sense if, like, they're... It doesn't make sense. I'm just going to retract that. <laughs> <It doesn't But, laughs> like, are they trying to carefully manage Rachel? Are they afraid she's going to, like... The, the animal folds here are on form at the moment. I, I mean, when I say at the moment, I mean, for these... The two episodes that we've delved into. On form. Love it. Remember to check out their stuff. Link in the description. Kill them if they argue? Like... Yes, because she's only <laughs> mean Rachel. And they've covered every book, by the way. So, <laughs> freaking Sylvester and Tweety over here, sneaking around like that. What are you after? Oh, toys. Where are my toys? 
Here's my new headcam is that the entire time Rachel is like holding Jake with like a knife to his throat <laughs> and just doesn't mention it at all. <laughs> He's by out of town. She <laughs> can, can I just say, when I was predicting this book, I had this whole extended prediction about, like, why Jake is out of commission. <laughs> and it turns out he's just out of town for the weekend. Out. Yep, yep. They managed to do a lot of chaos when he's out of town for two or three days. Yeah. Can you imagine you know if he what? actually did get kidnapped by the escort? If it were a different book, it would probably be okay. Yeah. Like, it would be really rough, but they would figure out how to deal with it, and there would be interesting group dynamics... Not just... Oh, by the way, we're missing, lo missing loads of character trait Jake leadership. So, one finger, drink. Probably two at this point. No, nah, it's all been the same string of conversations, so just one. Drink! Mean Rachel beating everyone up. It's just, just so bad. Do we want to talk about how messed up all the other characterizations are? I'm sure we'll circle back to Rachel <sighs> at some point. So, they have this initial conversation about who should be the leader, uh -huh. and everybody is, like, <laughs> living in bizarre land. Because, so... <laughs> It comes down to, I sort of buy that Jake is out of town and, like, Cassie is like, I don't want to be leader. Yeah, Axe that, is that's like, real. I don't want to be leader. Rachel and Marco's Marco... Marco's not going to suggest that Axe be the leader. Exactly. That is ridiculous. Completely absurd. Completely absurd. Marco Doesn't would never sense. say Axe is smarter than him. And even if Axe is smarter than him in some, like, more informed in some technical ways, like... Marco, Marco is way really smarter than Axe. definitely the best planner of this group, and Marco knows it. Yeah. Ludicrous. But, okay. Tobias's like only contribution to this conversation is like, I am no one's leader, which is ridiculous because I think <laughs> everyone would think that Tobias is a great candidate to fill this role. Yeah. No, 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 no. Someone's got to come back on this. Ted, you've been right on every step so far, but that's where you've found a banana to slip on. Mm -hmm. He also is like the one most likely to, because of his role as like the eyes in the sky Yeah, person. he has the perspective of like, right. the whole group. Right. Rachel is the worst. I mean, from that perspective, yeah, but personality-wise, Tobias is a big no-no. No, 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 no. I can't count it as something wrong because it's an opinion. It's not something factually wrong, but yeah, Tobias would not make a good leader. Best person for that. Uh, yes. But so the fact that nobody is advocating for Tobias at all, completely ridiculous. Even if, for some reason, it had to come down to, like, between Rachel and Marco, we know that Cassie and Tobias would not vote for Rachel in this situation. No, they're smart! And so, and so the, the fact... I mean, he's right there. He's right there. The fact that Marco, like, jumps past that is obviously a way to get around the fact that Cassie and Tobias would, would not never vote do for that. Rachel. No! It's and Tobias later on admits that he wouldn't have voted for Rachel, so doubling down on that point. It's so ridiculous. It doesn't feel like something Marco would do, even if he somehow thought that they would vote that way. I don't know. It's... Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, but it's like, how do you manufacture a situation where Rachel becomes the leader? It's like... This you don't a... do it with these characters. Right, right, right. <laughs> this is like a poor, a very poor effort. This is... It's basically a case of trying to make the characters fit the plot rather than the plot fit the characters. That's what this is. And that's where you fall into bad storytelling, which is what happened with this book. Tobias in this book was so absent. They kept sidestepping conversations. Like, there's a thing right after they all vote for Rachel to be leader. She's, like, feeling a little insecure because Cassie and Tobias didn't actually vote for her. Marco just did this weird maneuver. And Tobias shows up. To, I guess they're going to leave for the mission together and starts talking about it and she interrupts him which is great and <laughs> it's like do you think I'm going to be a good leader do you think I can do this and he just doesn't answer and it's like we should leave now if we want to go to the thing and I'm like why aren't you discussing this and then they like never discuss it there's this whole sense throughout the whole book that like Tobias doesn't approve of her as leader but they never get into it he never says anything I honestly finished this book and was like, these two need to break up. Like, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like, these versions of the characters, which I don't think match anything we've seen in canon before this, like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. I don't actually want them to break up, to be clear. Yeah. I want this book to be stricken from the record, is yes. what I actually yes. want. No, I think that's right. I yes. mean, and the Tobias characterization is so flat that the narration has to remind us of his character <laughs> in really weird ways. So it's like... Remember, Tobias got captured and tortured. 
So that's why he's being like this. You're like, okay, the amount of show, of tell, don't show in this book is like really outrageous. Mm. But in the characterizations of Tobias, I found it particularly annoying. Actually, no, there was another time I found it more annoying. (laughs) Yeah, it's completely bizarre. And there's this whole thing where she's like, oh, like Tobias didn't tell me he was going to vote for me, but maybe that's because he wants me to think it shouldn't matter whether he was going to vote for me or not. Which is, again, like, why aren't they just talking about yes. it? Or why isn't Tobias being, like, like, he's always, like, you know, Rachel, calm down or whatever. And they're always, like, talking to each other in private thoughts, mm-hmm. thoughts speaking mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And here, like, he's like, okay, we're going into the community center. Let's make sure we don't hurt anyone. And Rachel's like, he was calling out me, and that was mean. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's like they they didn't know what to do with the Rachel-Tobias relationship in this one. They're like, it's kind of inconvenient. Let's just kind of shove it to the side and have Tobias never say anything to her about anything. Yeah, but there's like well, ways you can kind of say like, yeah, oh, he's my say boyfriend. That's a good- I'm, f- I'm, I'm considering now, there are, so- there are long stretches here where I'm not actually saying anything, I'm just listening to what they say. It hardly feels like I'm making a, a, a video at this point. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I've still got an hour of this. I've got about three fingers left, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit, see if we can find some more content I can get involved in here. Not that I'm bored of the show, but it's just that I don't want it to get to the point where you, I'm not really contributing, because this is my video. If you want to see what they say, go to their channel. Like the fact that just a jet just... Cra- carry on from 47 minutes. Question of the year pool. <laughs> Again, that is the thing that is going to be on Visser 3's report card. Yes. Right? Yeah. Can we please pay attention to the important things for a I second. Also, I said that I liked Visser 3, like, using how difficult it is to kill the Andalite bandits yeah, to... Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. ...taunt the yeah. Garatron. But if he actually thinks the Garatron has a chance of succeeding... There is no way he would let the Garatron defeat the Andalite bandits that he's been fighting for right, like right. a year or Again, more. Again, a fair right. point. Like that's Every not time. what Visser Three does. He want he would want that credit. I don't. None of it makes sense. Can we talk about the several instances of sexual assault that occur in this book? Please. So okay. there's a lot of uh, disdain for coming. people in general. She's so cruel. She's yep. so cruel, which is very mean, Rachel. Like that's what we saw in her perspective. That is. Not I've talked about this before. She She's a bully in this book. Not part of Rachel's character in any other book. They invade a gym or something where that's your owned. She says, maybe someday Kirk and Kristen will get over the embarrassment of axes slicing off their gym shorts in front of their worshipful yuppie clients. Maybe. That is not necessary. No. And there are several other similar things that she's... This is why I said in my review that this mission stinks of a Rachel revenge mission. And she's All she's doing is getting revenge on people who have wronged her in the past. Which, it does make you think, is this mean Rachel rather than normal Rachel? Says when they're doing the sort of mayhem plan mm-hmm. where they attack a hair salon and the receptionist faints. Clunk, face down on the desk. It was pretty funny. Plus, she used way too much hairspray. Yeah, there was, okay, there was like, there were the instances of sexual assault, which Ted, you mentioned assaulting the, the intern, where she, like, this kid, that she also says a lot of really disdainful yeah, things he's about. he's a 17-year-old loser who joined the sharing to get a life, and what he gotten was a yerk in his head. Now he was Mr. Career Path and all, Mr. Responsibility, Mr. Self-Importance in a pathetic, short-sleeved, white dress shirt and clip-on tie. Please. I thought it might be interesting to make a photocopy of his butt. Send it to his boss. Tack a second copy up on the break room bulletin board. So I did. What? That, that's just thrown in there as like, yeah, we're causing all this chaos. Like, I think they were aiming for humor, maybe? Yeah, I, I pointed this specific example out, and this is where I said it's, it's basically Rachel bullying. There's no excuse. It's not, she's not being a good person by doing this. She's one of these people that she'll do something and say, I'm, I'm the good person, therefore everything I do is inherently good. Go on Twitter, there's plenty of these people. Yeah, you're not. You're just a dick. <laughs> it is famous. Cruel. It is ridiculous. It is sexual assault. It's just, and it's also like, I'm not going to lie, like, I don't know, this seems like a good reason to get a yerk. This poor kid, like, no one, like, 
liked him. He didn't have any friends. And now he's got a job and he's looking forward in his life and he's doing good things. And then this asshole bear walks in and makes a photo of him. What's wrong with this book? There's a lot wrong with it. So you mentioned the hair salon. I, like, I think I heard a slap. I think I heard the slap of a <laughs> book on the floor. You stay down there now. Jesus. I don't think anything's hit the floor more in this house than you. I, I was trying to piece together a joke in my head about how I get drunk to these episodes a lot and fall on the floor, but it hadn't come out right, and now I've fucked it up. Thanks, book. Tosser. There was so much misogyny in this book. Like, we talked about <laughs> the Rachels who are failing phys ed for some obscure reason. There's also the thing, they go into the beauty salon, and someone says, Eek! Oh, yeah, this is a beauty salon, Marco said. Eek? What am I, a mouse? Oh, yeah, because beauty salons are filled with women who are shallow and therefore, you know, say stupid things like eek. Since when does being shallow make you say eek? Um, can, this is a, a political issue, the whole misogyny thing. It wasn't really a topical thing until like 2014, 15, when the third wave feminists came in and paved the way for the shit we're in fucking exposed to these days. Yeah, they're reaping what they sow, J.K. Rowling, you silly person. Jump on that bandwagon, release the beast, and now you've been struck down by the monster you created. Do I feel sympathy for her? No, not really. You brought it into this world. But yeah, it happened within the last six years. I'm calling that modern political issue. So two fingers. Drink, that's one finger left. The bored airhead receptionist didn't even look up. They visit a judge who's a controller. Who, I'm sorry, what is the judge's <laughs> what is her name? name? I'll, I'll read it, but <laughs> that's not why I'm reading it. Judge Sally Forensic was, on most occasions, a distinguished looking older woman. On this particular afternoon, bawling and crawling under her big maple desk, black robes hiked around her knees. She didn't look terribly deserving of respect. This narrative is disgusting. It's so awful. It's so offensive to, like, everyone. Like, like, every human. Yeah, I agree. Everything about Rachel in this book is awful. She is a bully in this book, which is part of the reasons why it's so awful. Every single human in this, it's awful. And you can cut this part, but right after that, they say... We avoided the police station, too many guns, even I knew it'd be too easy to get killed, and none of us wanted the accidental death of a real, hard-working human cop on our hands. Cops are the only people we respect in this book. What? No! I had that under 90s moments, actually. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I 90s moments. That's 90s reference, which is free things, but we've only got one left. And we haven't activated the wild drink, so that is going to be it. Two fingers over. So we entered this, hoping to find somebody who liked Book 37, The Weakness. And we thought we'd found them. And I was lied to by Lance Magma, who said, and I quote, Animal Morphology is the one to do if you're looking for a group that loved 37. So much so they did two episodes on it. I think you know what you were doing, Lance Magma. I think you know what you were doing, cheeky bastard. Yeah, that, that was very entertaining. Very entertaining. And I do highly recommend Animorphology. Go check out their other stuff. They've done coverage on every book. They've got real good banter. They're a good bunch. And I don't think there's much else I, I need to say on them apart from that. Go check them out. The link's going to be in the description. I'm also going to put a link to the fan fiction they were reading. The, the, the Real Weakness. The one on screen now. I'll link that in there as well, so you can read all this stuff for yourself. The search continues for somebody who genuinely likes this book, and I'm not going to stop until I find one. That's the whole... That is the purpose now of this watching Getting Drunk to Podcast series. I'm, I'm calling it now. That is the new purpose, to find somebody who likes this book. Okay? Good. I'm glad we got that sorted. Stay tuned for... The Mean Rachel Annie Theory, courtesy of Medi Bollocks. Well, not courtesy of, but thanks to Medi Bollocks for constantly suggesting it. Uh, that will be coming up soon. 
I've still got to do the analysis of Chapman. Again, that's it needs a fair bit of research, so it's going to take a while. And I'm probably going to do... I'm actually going to probably do another couple of analysis between them of really like, obscure things. So I'm looking at aliens from the Elmis Chronicles. Loads of them just like mentioned once. So, yeah, that's what you can expect soon. Again, uh, uh, at some point I'll do another video of Raptor on the TV series. Yeah, there's always going to be more content. I'm hoping to order the German versions of the first three books, which I'll do a review of. That'll be awesome, I hope. Then again, it's me doing it, so it will be lukewarm. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay, stay tuned for the next one. Maybe we'll finally get a wild drink involved. It'll be about bloody time. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ta-ra.